Greetings and welcome back mechanics to, of course, Scrap Mechanic, where in the last episode we finished the work on our garage, though I say finish and I stumble over the word because no build of mine is ever truly finished and there are a good number of things that I want to add besides the mysterious construction that's going here and yes, one of those things is going to be a garage door. Don't worry, I heard all of your cries for a garage door. I will work on one. But in this episode, we're actually going to work on a vehicle instead. Though it's going to be a vehicle that is possibly going to help me with my builds in the future. One of the things that I noted when I was building this was there were plenty of times where I wanted to be on the top of a large structure and uh, work, doing work up there. But the only convenient way to get up there was usually to build a stack of, of tanks in this case, or boxes, or just bricks uh, on occasion, and that's not exactly an ideal solution. I think we can do better, but we're going to have to do better a bit away from the base, because the base is getting a little bit over full at this point, I would say. Let's uh, just reverse, hopefully not crash into anything. We're going to go and find ourselves ah, a nice place to build some new stuff. Let's drive. We could go on down here Ooh. or crash into a tree, you know. That is also an option. But there's a nice grassy area just over here that we could build up, I think. And that would be fine by me. Yeah, here we are. It's nice and level right about there. I think that'll do. Right, we're going to be building in the shade of this big old tree. Well, actually, no. That'll be a little bit hard for you to see. I'll build over here instead. Now, the vehicle that I'm thinking of doing is building a car with a lift on it. I'm sure you're well, very well familiar with the sort of, uh, of vehicle I'm describing there. Um, they use them in places like the airport. Or the uh, fire brigade will use them. And I would like to build something similar. Though, I want something a little bit more than just a car with a lift on it. It would be easy enough to build a vehicle with wheels and a control and a lift, much like the lift that we've got in the garage. But I want something a little bit more schnazzy. Specifically, I want our vehicle to be able to stabilize itself. So, for example, to be able to fold it wheels away or use them in some way to create stabilizing limbs instead in fact let me just centralize that by uh, doing this there we go nice and centralized so this is going to be the beginning now i'm not going to work on the lift straight away instead i'm going to place down a control now the reason why i need the control there first is we are going to have to obviously build the wheels such that they can turn and that means we're going to have free bearings if you hook them up to a control the actual control icon uh, unit, as I've got here, or the controls of a seat, then it kind of locks them in place unless they're being told to turn. And that's something that we're going to need, especially if we've got folding limbs, because they would just be wibbly wobbly all over the place all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and start looking into ways to get this to work the way I'm thinking. Uh, it's primarily just the folding limbs for starters. So. Let's see what we can come up with.
Okay, I think we have something here. Let's see if I've wired it up correctly. These should fold in such a way as to use the tires as it's kind of uh, limbs, really, to, to prop up the vehicle. There we go. Now, realistically, I would actually prefer these limbs to be rotated the other way, all things told. Hmm... Although, there is a certain charm to this, actually. I think this this might be okay. We could have the limbs going out that way instead. Uh, yeah, let's let's see about that, shall we? Uh, let's just make sure I've got everything right. I didn't, unfortunately. There we go. There we are. So, we want number five and number two to ro rotate in the opposite direction. Of course, that would be this one. There we go. There we are, let's see how that goes. There we are. I think that would give us a nice platform to stand on, especially if the back wheels were doing exactly the same. So I'm going to set up the back wheels now. The black wheels are going to be slightly different in that they are not going to have any turning mechanism. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've just realized something. These wheels, because I can turn them, would cause this thing to rock. Ah, we don't want that now, do we? No, we don't. I might need to have these completely lifted up off the ground to prevent them from interacting. I hadn't really thought of that one. That's a bit of a shame. We'll see what I can do. I'll set up the, the rear wheels in exactly the same way, and if perhaps in the future I redesign this, I'll... Design it in such a way that the wheels are completely brought out of the equation. Right now, I'll just have to remember not to try and turn things, but uh, I will quickly get this built up and I will bring you back. Right, well, I think I've got everything set up. I had to set up the rear wheels just slightly differently in order to accommodate the fact that I wanted to have suspension on the back. But let's see. Will this deploy properly? Looks like it. There we go. Perfect. And of course, we wobble a little bit besides. <sighs> that is going to be annoying. However, what I could perhaps do, since it looks like the components underneath are supporting the vehicle a little bit more, um, I also need to rotate these, because they are facing the wrong way. Let's do that. I could perhaps... No, it would interfere with them rotating. Oh well, I'll just have to live with that then. Okay, so we've got our transforming wheels done, so that's step one of the build complete. Now, step two is to add the lift. Now, the lift is going to go back here, and there's a nice section here that should be able to support it. Uh, let's build this out. We only need it to be too wide, much the same as the lift back at base. We will have the limbs basically folded down, and that will allow us to minimize the amount of room we need but i'm probably going to stack much more than four so that we can get a good bit of height on this design 
if that's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. It's going to take me a little bit of time, but once we're done, I will bring you back and we shall probably start putting the finishing touches. Though before I go, thinking about it, I can go ahead and pop down the engine here as well, since the engine is going to be probably built into the front here, since there's not going to be a control system. On this side, we're going to want the engine uh, about there, I would say. It doesn't need to be very strong. This is going to be more of an industrial vehicle than anything else, but I will br bring you back when we've got the lift section all programmed in. Welcome back. As you can see, we have our lift. It's got quite a lot of reach on it, though it is slightly different from the lift that we have built in the garage. Now, the reason for that is to do largely with the way that the game will reposition components when a vehicle loads in. The garage is fortunate in that it's an object attached to the world, so the only time that loads in or loads out or gets reset is when I leave the game and load up the game, and that is part of the reason why occasionally the lift is all bugged out or the doors are bugged out. Now, the problem with the way the game works is that the lift in the garage works because as I was building it, I was rotating the bearings by 10 degrees in order to give myself clearance to build in the props and the, and the, the stacking arms. However, when the game loads, all of those bearings start at zero degrees. Even though the control says, well, you should start at 10 degrees, that's your initial position, it loads the bearing in at zero, then immediately moves it to 10 degrees before doing anything else. But that can lead to problems because when it first loads in, there are four limbs, or rather, two sets of limbs that are existing in exactly the same place as each other at the same time before the game tries to move them apart, and that's what causes the glitchiness. However, with a vehicle where you are probably in any particular play session going to be loading it in and unloading it, that is going to be a very, very big problem. So what I've done here is I've set up these limbs in such a way that they aren't as compact but they do stack on top of each other in much the same way and you may have noticed that i'll just unlock that again so you can just see how they're achieving this as you can see there all these different sections moving independently at, at different times just so that you can see the staggered animation and really see how i've hooked this all up now all that remains here really is to get the control system built up here and then obviously we also want to build up the well just you know ge generally make the vehicle look a little bit nicer but i think this is a build that will probably extend over multiple episodes so what i'm going to do for now is i'm just going to get the control system set up first and then we're going to drive this back to the garage and just make sure that it actually does what it was built for. Now, up here, I want something really nice and light up here. Um, have we got anything really nice and light? I don't think so. Most things are medium weight. Very, very, very few things are lightweight. In fact, most things that aren't medium weight are heavyweight, which is not exactly what we want. I guess wood blocks are the only other things that are lightweight. We don't want too much weight on the control system. Because all of this weight is being is balanced right above these rear wheels, and we don't want the suspension to give out. That would be a little bit embarrassing, I will be honest with you. Uh, we want to build that back a little bit. And up, I clearly miscalculated where I was put, putting all of that, but there we go. And up we go, and we will want a control somewhere up here. Then we will hook up all of the wiring all of the various connections that are necessary and we should be good to go after that yeah let's pop that there you know what there are a couple of little embellishments that we could quite happily add on to this and i think i will just for the sake of it <laughs> let's be honest with ourselves it wouldn't be one of my builds if it didn't have completely unnecessary embellishments right there we go but uh, one one of the embellishments that i think I, and I can't take credit for this idea. I've actually s saw it in another video, though I can't remember for the life of me 
where I saw it. Otherwise, I would I would gladly credit the uh, initial designer. If you do happen to recognize this, by the way, if you watch a lot of different scrap mechanic videos and you recognize where this is from, please do let me know in the comments of this video and I will adjust the uh, video description to give credit where it is to you. Something I feel is very, very important. Let me just pop this there. We're going to have a couple of little warning lights. When uh, when the switch is, is used, these warning lights can just rotate. It's it's completely pointless in every way, but it's just really fun in my opinion. Let's pop these around. Unfortunately, that bearing is currently free, so it's rotating however it wants to right now. There we go. Now, we could also have these at the back as well if we want to, and... Uh, yeah, I kind of want to. I've got to be honest with you. I think uh, that might be quite neat. We could have uh, little warning lights just kind of tucked back here. Uh, sure, let's build that out now. And then we can get that all set up. So there. And... Um, well, I'm not sure, actually. No, we could, we could fit the warning lights right at the back here. That would be fine. So we could have the warning lights just set up there and there. So that when... I'm using this lift, I can flick this little little button, and then these these warning lights will start to rotate and let everyone know that there is uh, industrial machinery hard at work in the vicinity and they should take care not to get hurt by it. So there we go, that's all nice and easily set up. And then we just pop down here, a uh, little control. It doesn't need to be much of anything really. And it just hooks up to each of these bearings in turn. Make sure that all of the bearings are facing Oh, did I forget? Oh, I forgot the bearings. I'm a derp. Massive derp. Ah, oh, my lord. I would forget my head if it weren't screwed on. It's not actually screwed on. If it was screwed on, I'd be some sort of weird cyborg. But it's, it's attached in a much more complex way. Thankfully. Because I would forget it. Even if it was screwed on. Let's see. There we go. There we are. There's the uh, telltale drill sound. If you haven't noticed that before, by the way, whenever you're attaching something to a bearing, it'll make a little drill sound as if you were, you were using an electric screwdriver to uh, screw it or bolt it to the bearing. There we go. It doesn't do that if you're attaching it to anything else. There we go. Perfect. I like. So that one's rotating that way. That one's rotating the other way now. That one is rotating that way and the other way. Fantastic. So now all you want is for them to rotate by... Honestly, you could just tell them to rotate by any degree. As long as you turn, make it cyclic, it's fine. However, you can reduce these, like some of them. I'll have these ones at 45 and these at 60. Just so that they spin at slightly different speeds. I think that will be pretty cool. Uh, we'll leave it as kind of a midpoint and then click on cyclic. Now, obviously, I'm going to want to uh, spruce this thing up quite a lot, but it's already been a fairly uh, lengthy build, so I don't want to take too much more time from everyone. There we go. Now, if we just hop in here, press 1. Oh, that noise. It's going to melt my brain. Uh, unfortunately, we'll just have to live with it if we want these cool little warning lights. There we go. Now, you can speed this up, obviously, if you really want to. You can just make that, say, 165, 165, and this to 105. There we are. And you'll notice they'll start to spin a little bit faster. <laughs> oh, it's going to melt my brain. No, stop. Turn off. Please. Oh, dear. I don't know whether I've turned them on or not. Let me go down there and have a look. Yeah, they're off. They'll eventually stop, I believe. I, I hope. No, maybe not. Ah, oh, what have I done? It was such a nice idea. And then it failed me so badly. Okay, there we go. Right, so... Let's go ahead and hook all of this up to the controls and then see if we can get this to drive all the way back to the garage there we are of course before we do that we do want to set up the individual controls so that i can actually lift and lower this 
as I require. I'll go ahead and do that now off camera and I will bring you back when that is ready. there we go so I have completed the wiring and if I go ahead and start turning them off so number five takes us down to the second level turn off number four takes us down to the first level of added height and when we turn off switch number three takes us all the way back down to the basics now we are slightly on a uh, an incline and I suspect it's because the suspension back here is having to deal with so much weight but okay let's uh, see whether we can drive around at all can we go no yes I obviously need to re rotate these they are not quite rotating the right way and these are not rotating in the right way let's get those sorted there we are and what kind of power have we got on this uh, we want a little bit of more power than that Okay, let's see. Can we rotate? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Let's go. All the weight is at the back, so we should actually be reasonably stable. I know, I know. I'm going to turn them on. It's going to sound really annoying. But it looks cool, I think. You know what else will be cool? You know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go, go for maximum height. Look at that. We are wobbling, mind you. We would need to have these these wheels significantly more spread out to be able to support something of this height. Oh! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> okay, turn that off. Uh, I, I really want to like them, but that's just going to annoy the dickens out of me. Still, this is rather cool. There's still one more level, though. Let's go up. There we go. So we can actually drive around if we... Whoa, 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 whoa. That was a little bit risky. I think we need a little bit of extra... Extra weight around here. But we can now actually get to the top of our garage from our lift car. Now, as I said, we are going to need to decorate this quite a lot more than we currently have. There's an awful lot to do with this thing. And even now, it's already incredibly laggy. But let's take this away. Let's go back to where we got the trike. I may get rid of the suspension at the very back. I'm not sure on that one yet. Possibly. I think it might be useful for me. But for the time being, we're going to focus the next episode on just prettifying this and possibly tightening up the design a little bit more. And then, in the episodes following that, we're going to actually start work on the house. I'm not going to start work on the mysterious project on the side of the garage yet. I may do the garage doors before that, though. It shouldn't actually be that complicated. But I'm fairly happy with what we've managed to do. We've got a, a vehicle that uh, is reasonably interesting. Let's go ahead and transform. <laughs> Wonderful. I like it. I like it a lot. And actually, it handles me trying to apply forward uh, momentum whilst transforming fairly well. There we go. Let's transform. And turn on all of the lifts. Ah, glorious. Now we're not wobbling anyway. Oh, wait. We still are. Uh, I may need to do something about that. 
Though, it's kind of funky in a way, you know, if I just want to have a little bit of a dance while I'm doing my lifty stuff. But that is going to be it for this episode, I think. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you will be joining me for the next. As always, I welcome any feedback you might have. Any suggestions you've got for the build would be warmly welcomed. But that is going to be it from me. So until next time, do take care.